And welcome to Just Ladies. I am your host, Susie Ojuang, and I am thrilled and glad that you tuned in. As we kick off the weekend here on Just Ladies, we're all about celebrating women, women who are living their passion in making things happen in different fields. And today I'm excited, excited because we're going to talk to a lady who's doing lots of things, um, lots of things that are chatting out into their own patterns. In fact, today the lady we're featuring on Just Ladies is an all-rounder and I like to call her Jackie of all trades. Without further ado, welcome to the show, Sheila. Thanks, thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm super. So, should we call you Sheila or Kwambooks? Which one do you prefer? Uh, well, my friends call me Kwambooks, uh, but Sheila, Sheila works. Sheila works. So, um, to start us off, Sheila, um, you've had an amazing journey and um, when you cleared high school, when you, finish, when you finished school, did you know that you'd always be in the entertainment scene? Did you know that you'd always be doing media or anything of the sort? I kind of did. I think I was always involved in uh, drama, um, debate, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much anything that did to, with entertainment. Um, and then soon after school, I went into modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, which was actually a coincidence because I wasn't really planning to be a model. Um, so yeah, then I found myself in modeling and you know TV, radio, and here we are. Oh yeah, modeling. Well, it tells a lot. Your height. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, I'm, I'm five eleven. For those of you who don't know, so you kind of have to go into you modeling kind of, at some point. You put it into good use. Yes. Good. So at what point in your life were you at when um, the opportunity to go to Big Brother came knocking? Um, that was actually, wow, it seems like an eternity ago. In fact, yesterday I met someone and they were like, wow, you went Big Brother a long time ago. I was like, no, that's not that long. <laughs> but um, I remember I was uh, at K24 at the time. I was uh, doing uh, news uh, as a reporter, stroke everything. <laughs> and, um, you know, what chilling, I think that was like right after post-election violence. And um, things were not, like, we had covered the whole election thing and... At some point, I was like, me, I don't think I want to do this journalism thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a friend of mine actually helped me fill in the forms for Big Brother. And we completely forgot about it because that's what everybody wanted to do at that time. So there were so many there were so many people who had uh, registered for it. So I was like, I'm not going to get it. Until they called me out of the blues. I'm like, hi, I would like to tell you that you've, uh, you will be expecting me in South Africa. And I'm like, ah, shut up. And I hung up. Mm -hmm. I did that like five times before. Finally, they were like, okay, Sheila, please don't hang up. And yeah, and the rest is history. In fact, around the same time when that happened, there were already rumors going on, on the papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were all over the blogs that you were going in. Did you know, or you were also just wondering what's happening? To be honest, I, I didn't know nothing. Mm -hmm. um, the, whole, the whole idea with Big Brother is like, once you've gone through your audition, or everything's supposed to be basically in secret mm -hmm. but it wasn't a secret that there were so many people who had applied for it and i didn't actually think i'd made any impression at the, at the audition because everybody else seemed to be confident me i was just like oh, okay here i am at the audition let's do this mm -hmm. and so when i started seeing articles in blogs i was like in fact even in the paper and they're saying this is the girl who's going for big brother and i'm like wait how, how come everybody else knows before me mm -hmm. and it almost cost me the chance to go uh, oh. to represent kenya because uh, it actually contravene the laws of, of Big Brother. But as soon as they found out, of course, it was the rumor did start for me because mm -hmm. I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, I guess they just decided to go with me. Oh, great. And you're the only Kenyan who had a chance to be on Big Brother twice. Why do you think they came looking for you? Uh, aside from the fact that I'm the most entertaining <laughs> Kenyan out there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that uh, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I guess at that point, um, when they were doing the All Stars, that what been for like four uh, Kenyans who've been to Big Brother, so mm -hmm. and I was literally the only female, the only one who you know who went the farthest. 
Um, I don't know, actually, let me tell you the truth. They, they let people vote, and people <laughs> voted, and then that's what happened, so I got called back in. Oh, so people voted you back in. So I guess you're right. You are the most entertaining the canon. most entertaining <laughs> canon out there, <laughs> big. <laughs> All right, coming back home, um, you spent a lot of time in Nigeria, yes. and the audiences in Nigeria, there's just something about you that they love. They really, really love you there. And um, what was that experience like? Seeing in Nigeria, I mean, uh, West Africa has always been that place that I fell in love with the first time I went there. Mm -hmm. um, but when I did go to Nigeria for the very first time, that was actually after Big Brother, it was so surprising because people actually turned up in the hundreds and thousands to literally come and see me at the airport. And that was like so surprising. Because mm -hmm. in Kenya, I kind of just, you know, came in, checked into, you know, I checked into my hotel. Then we had a party at the hotel and then there was an after party in the club. And then, you know, after that, it was just, you know, people going like, oh my God, Chila in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. But with Nigeria, it was like a whole different, in fact, it's like I was representing Nigeria. It was that crazy because mm -hmm. I remember getting out of the plane. We were with the P unit. Uh, they were going for the mamas. It was around the same time I was there. Um, and what, getting out of the airport, that was uh, the Lagos airport, Mutala um, uh, Mohammed. And would you believe it? There was like noise. You know, there was like people chanting outside. And so we're like, okay, because there's so many celebrities coming from all over Africa yeah. for MTV, mm -hmm. for the mamas. And we're like, oh, okay, okay, you guys buy because we're not the same. Delegation, so like, mm -hmm. okay, ask guys, we'll see you ahead. So I was like, wow, these guys are gonna have fans to come and see them. That's awesome. Until we get out of the airport and realize that the fans were actually there for me. They came oh, wow. with t shirts with my face, and I'm like, oh, I almost passed out. I wasn't ready because I was like, we had been partying the whole night, then we had to catch an early flight. Right. It, was, it was just crazy. You and weren't the ready. The whole trip there, I just wasn't ready. Oh, I mean, yeah. Nigerians are amazing and this was your first time in nigeria yeah that was my very first time and wow. ever since i think i've got like 30 times after that <laughs> what a reception though what <laughs> a reception was. so coming back home and knowing people outside of kenya recognize you they identify with you and um back at home as you've said it was a bit lukewarm you just yeah. checked into your hotel and guys were like okay well you've come back uh how did that make you feel i'll be honest you know um I love, I love being at home. I love being in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually such a break from, you know, like, say, being in Nigeria. Because for me, Nigeria is difficult. I can't even go to, like, the supermarket. I can't, you know, I can't just be like, okay, let's go to the shop. Or, okay, you know, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Especially at that time. Because people are so, you know, their, their, their entertainment scene is very vibrant. Mm -hmm. So everywhere you go, people want to take pictures with you. They want to identify with you. But here in Kenya, Kenya is home. Imagine if I had that everywhere I went. That would be so disturbing you're sitting i mean people occasionally say hi to me like in the restaurant or anywhere i go they they will you know they will acknowledge and be like hi i was a, oh, your biggest fan or something like that but you don't want them going overboard yeah. you don't want you to take photos with you every single time you step out of the house that wouldn't make any sense so for me i love the fact that at home where i just chill you just you know you pass somebody else like Shh, that's you yeah, see, that's that beautiful big brother. They don't even whisper anymore. They don't even care. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's how we like it. So, you, you really, it really doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't at all. In okay. fact, I like it like this. Well, good. Going back to Nigeria, you spent a little bit of time there. Actually, a lot of time there. And while you were there, you did a bit of music. Well... You have a video called Video Girl. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and girl, you were stuff. little sexy Sheila. You were working <laughs> it. You were working it, girl. Was that your first single? Uh, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> How do I answer this question? <laughs> no, it wasn't my first single. Actually, something that a lot of people don't know about me is the first time I got into music mm -hmm. was, I can't even remember which year that was, but I did a gospel jam because I was uh, in the choir at that time. So I released a gospel uh, single, I think in 2004. Hold up. You you were doing gospel? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think you were in the choir. The I sent you some TV. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exclusive. Exclusive. And Valley Road, um, you know, I used to be there as early as 7 a.m. Wow. I, I was in the choir, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Really, really. The other side of Sheila, guys. Exclusive here in Just Ladies. <laughs> The first time she said it and admitted it, that she was on the choir. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that to be ashamed about? No, you of know? course not. I was in the choir of course and then not. I did a gospel jam. Uh, it was actually on Hope FM mm -hmm. and it was the countdown. It actually did well. You know, I was like, you know, doing my thing. Um, but then I think I didn't really want to get into music to do gospel. 
which is ironic because if you can an artist who gets an opportunity mm -hmm. to say God in their jam will do the gospel. But I, I really didn't feel uh, gospel was a thing I, I wanted to do. Um, then I think fast forward, the next time I released a single was about like four years later, or even six years later. Mm -hmm. um, that's when Video Girl came out. Oh, great. Actually four years later, no, six years later. So it was your first single? Yeah, it was my first official single and mm -hmm. I went ahead and shot a music video um, in, in Lagos. Oh, great. Um, are you still doing music? Yeah, that's a very heavy question. Am I doing music? Well, I think right now what I'm doing is more mentoring. Mm -hmm. I work with a lot, a lot of Kenyan artists. I'm in radio right now, um, so I receive a lot of Kenyan uh, music. Also, on top of that, you know that I do Industry Night, which is working with a lot of Kenyan artists. So I, I try to mentor, I try to guide, um, give like musical direction, especially for those ones who are in music for the very first time. So when it comes to my music, I do it for fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do it more for fun. I love to perform. So when I get a chance to perform, I'm all in. Yeah. Oh, great. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break, and then we'll come back and get close and personal with Sheila. We get, we're going to get to know more about Industry Night and her being on radio and a lot more. Keep it locked. <laughs> 